Divine Truth Theme Discussions Discussions between Jesus and Mary about specific topics and issues This is Session 3, Part 4 of the discussion God's Laws of Forgiveness and Repentance where Jesus and Mary continue discussing the operation of God's principles and laws of forgiveness and repentance, introducing our responsibility to forgive and repent and our role in engaging both processes. This session was recorded on 6th of September 2017 from 12.15 p.m. in Wilkesdale, Queensland, Australia. Now, next section, we're going to talk about why individuals or society collectively chooses to overlook sin because that's a very prevalent problem <laughs> and it's very relevant to our discussion of forgiveness and repentance for a lot of reasons yes but just briefly we've everything we've talked about so far in this whole series is showing us that in order to forgive or repent the very first thing we have to do is see there's a sin. Exactly. <laughs> and it has to actually be one. And it has to be a sin from, from God's, God's perspective. perspective. Mm. So, and then obviously, then we can engage the further processes, which is to um, choose to repent if we committed the sin or to forgive if yeah. there, somebody um, hurt us yeah. through a sin against us. Yeah. And then we can, you go know, through go through the pain. pain of all of that. Yeah. Of the forgiveness process, and if we need to forgive, and repentance if we need to forgive. We need to go through the pain of the actual sin, is the one that's being committed right now. Yeah. And then, of course, the fourth process is that we need to go through the pain of what caused us, if, if we're repentant, yes. what caused us to sin. Yes. But all those processes can't begin without firstly seeing <laughs> sin, seeing what the sin is, and yeah. understanding a sin is actually being committed. Yeah. And so, obviously, we've already shown that we have a lot of emotions surrounding sin. Yes. Um, and Collectively and individually. Yes. Mm. Yeah. 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 Even emotions about the word sin, let alone. Totally. <laughs> let alone sin itself. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and oftentimes, sin's not recognised. Mm. Um, and there's a lot of reasons for that. Mm. And I... Perhaps it's just good if we just go through each one individually and I'll ask you some questions about each. Yeah, it's each probably one. important to note at this point that the reasons are not exhaustive that we're listing here. You yeah. know, we could list a lot more reasons. But what we're trying to do in this conversation now is open up the person's concept of why we as, as individuals or as society ignore sin. Why, yeah. why we don't see things the way God sees them. Yeah. It is really what we're looking at here. Yeah. So it's important that we see that as the basis of the conversation. We're not going to list every reason why. No. And also we're not it's not just the reasons why we're going to list how we overlook sin, aren't we? Yeah, that's the right. The methods we use to the methods overlook. Methods we use, yeah. But even then sin. it's not every method. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we are very slippery slimy characters yeah. <laughs> when it comes to sin. And uh, you know, if you think of the average child by the time it becomes an adult it's learnt many methods <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> of avoiding taking responsibility for any action. Yeah. Yeah. So and uh, and that's the same with all of us when we become adults when it comes to sin and feeling repentant for sin in particular. Yeah. Um, we, we are very, very slippery, uh, you know, and one of the ways to avoid, of course, uh, recognising any sin at all is to is to actually ignore that sin has actually occurred. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> so, absolutely. So we need to see all the ways we ignore sin has occurred. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, so let's start with the first one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Ignoring sin by refusing to see that sin is real. So this is quite common on earth today, yeah. um, where I always call it sort of a backlash against sort of religion. It's quite prevalent to say, no, sin isn't real at all, and it's all just a construct to control everyone or, or whatever. Yeah. So why uh, i've kind of alluded to part of the answer there but <laughs> course, yeah. there's a lot more to it <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. why why do we want to believe that sin is not real well as you alluded to in your in your opening there um there are many reasons why mm -hmm. a lot a lot of the reasons are revolving around how we were treated as children and it, by our parents in particular mm -hmm. and how they define what is wrong and what is right because we often come to see, we, we often come to believe that, you know, I suppose the best way to put it with your parents is 
one day what was wrong, the next day they often feel was right. Mm -hmm. Now this creates a huge amount of confusion about what is actually wrong and what is actually right. Mm -hmm. So that, that's one reason, mm -hmm. because we, we have huge confusion about wrong and right. We, we, we believe our parents to a large degree, particularly during our formative years to the time when we have a developed intellect. And so we come to see that through their behaviour, some days what was wrong, the next day was right. And then we come to believe from that, that maybe nothing is wrong and nothing is right. Or, you know, maybe it just depends on the person's perspective, mm -hmm. or maybe mm -hmm. it just depends on the person's way of looking at things. And so we sort of, because we're raised in, a, in a, an environment where sin is subjective, mm -hmm. we start to feel that it's not really real. Correct. And, yep. and generally, parents and society both believe sin is subjective. Mm -hmm. So what is a sin for one person mm -hmm. is often something that is desired for another. Mm. And, uh, and, and because of that, we become very confused about what a sin is and what a sin isn't. Yeah. So there, there's reasons like that due to belief systems that get established during childhood, due, due to how we've been treated and due to what we observe around us going on. And uh, that causes us then to come to believe that there is no definite thing such as sin. Can that also happen if in childhood we're made to feel like a lot of things are sin and we're, we're really controlled and then... Well, now we... we're talking about a different set of emotions. Yes, yep, it is. So let's go through those sets of emotions. Yep. These sets of emotions are where harm has been perpetrated towards me in the name of sin. So in yeah. other words, where I have been punished, abused, violently hurt, uh, manipulated, controlled, or otherwise harmed mm -hmm. by people who say that I sinned mm -hmm. and that's the reason why they're doing those particular things to me and punishing me in the way they are. Mm -hmm. So that, that creates a lot of emotions about the whole context or even the word of sin. Mm -hmm. And that's a whole set of other mm -hmm. sort of sy systems of belief system that, that then cause me to go and have a violent reaction to the concept of sin even. Because every time somebody mentions the word sin, all I can relate it to is how much somebody used that word to just harm me. Yeah. In other words, they used that word to sin against me. Yes. And, yes. and so now I've got a very distorted emotional view mm -hmm. of, of the, 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 uh, um, the idea or the concept of sin. So then you're saying I enter a state of rebellion against sin because it's, I see it as a, it's a harmful thing. Yes, and, and the reality is many religions and parents have systematically and systemically used mm -hmm. um, this concept of sin to perpetrate violent, harmful acts upon children mm. um, and to cause them, cause children to conform to society and to parental rule. Mm -hmm. So the reality is that it's a very, very damaging part of our life. And, and so we are bound to have some quite violent emotional reactions mm. to even the word sin or the word wrong, right, and mm -hmm. those kind of words. We're going to have some very, very strong emotional reactions to, not because of what is wrong or right, yeah. but because we were harmed in the justification of their version of wrong and right. Mm. Mm. And is that different then, do you think, say, when I might have grown up in a belief system, it might be a religion or it might be a family system, where certain things were viewed as sinful and certain things not, or certain things seen as very wrong, absolutely wrong and absolutely mm -hmm. right. Mm -hmm. And then I grow up and I go out and see more of the world or I, I start to get an education in different ways and I see, oh, that was clearly wrong. That was clearly, now that I have more information, I can see the way that so I So in was other taught. words, my family definition of what was good yep. was not necessarily good. And, and some, my family definition of what was bad was not necessarily bad. Yes. Mm. And it may not have been that I was, I was punitively treated or harshly treated, mm -hmm. but I just see yeah, that was misguided and yes. that's actually scientifically I can see that's not true or whatever. Yeah. 
Um, would I still have the same problems or same rejection of the idea of sin in that case? can do because it still creates confusion. It's, yes. It basically now is saying to you, ah, oh, um, it's really up to my interpretation mm. of what is wrong. Not realising in that moment that really you're interpreting it based upon ethics yes. or, or what you'd call reality. Yeah. And your parents didn't. Yes. There is this subsequent thing that we go, well, well, that's my ethics and that's my reality. Yeah. And then there's all these spiritual new age concepts that get imposed upon that. Yes. You know, of like, that's your reality, my reality, your ethics, my ethics. Mm -hmm. It doesn't, no one's right, no one's wrong, everybody's right, everybody's, you know, yeah, wrong. Yeah. All these yeah. kind of philosophical conundrums that, yes. that, that most of these kind of religious concepts and philosophical concepts produce cause you to then come to say, well, uh, it's up to me what sin is and, and what I will do, and it's up to me what sin isn't and what I won't do, you know? Yeah. And, and, and so now I'm basically saying that God doesn't determine sin. Mm -hmm. um, God doesn't determine what's right and wrong, and right and wrong is my personal opinion. Yeah. In other words, what I think is right is right, yeah. and what I think is wrong is it's wrong. wrong. Yeah. We also have, uh, so, so all of this causes us to then go, okay, is there really such a thing as sin? Yeah. Uh, is there such a concept of sin? Is sin really a real thing? Mm. Is there such a thing as God having laws even yeah. that can be broken? Yeah. Is there such a thing as God even? Yeah. Like, <laughs> you know, and, and once we go down that line, we're basically saying that uh, by now we got to the point, well, now we're basically saying, well, if sin isn't real, mm -hmm. then I can ignore the whole concept of it. Yeah. The whole terminology yeah. of it, the concept of it, everything. I can just ignore the whole thing. Yes. And also uh, ignoring sin by refusing to believe sin is real uh, is a, it can be a purposeful act as well. Yeah. In other words, you could be engaging in a sin mm -hmm. that you want to continue to engage, mm -hmm. that you know or your conscience is telling you, and we'll talk about your conscience in a few weeks' time, yeah. um, that your conscience is telling you is wrong, mm -hmm. but you would like to not believe it's wrong because you want to keep doing it. Yeah. And so you just refuse to believe that there's anything that's sin that you're ever going to be punished or penalised for, corrected for doing something wrong. Yeah. So it yeah. could, could be for that reason too. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. All mm. right. So, so that's a major way that sin is overlooked. Yes, yeah. If you don't believe sin is real, then there's a pretty good chance you're going to be able to easily engage it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm. All right. Second way that we overlook sin. Uh, ignoring sin by refusing to believe that sin is actually detrimental, that it's harmful. Mm -hmm. So why do we want to believe that most of the things that God classifies as sin is just God being picky or fussy or... <laughs> God's being anal. <laughs> because <laughs> so far in this series, we've talked a lot, haven't we, about how fine God's definition of sin is. It's yeah. fairly um, exact. Yeah. And it, it's, it's the reality is we're all sinning pretty much moment by moment. Not, not necessarily, you know, it depends yeah. upon our intentions and desires, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. If I have loving intentions and desires, I'm not sinning hardly at all. Yeah. <laughs> but the average person on the planet doesn't have well-formulated loving intentions or desires. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So why do, why? Well, a lot of this is about uh, trying to minimise, isn't it, the effect of sin. Um, so, so basically it's like saying, like, firstly, we can minimise the effect of sin by going, it's not a sin at all. Mm -hmm. And and this is by saying, oh, it, well, you know, God's perfect. And I understand God being perfect, if I believe in God at all. I understand God's perfect and he can pick on things if he wants to. But we're humans, you know, like, and we talk about this a bit later. But but here in this one, we can go, oh, just God's being picky and he's just being, you know, being stupid about the whole thing. What does he expect? Of course, it's just a normal thing. Everyone's engaging it. And we'll talk about that later as well. And there's a lot of other arguments that we present. So we go, oh, no, there's no, there's no. And here in this phase of it, we're talking about there's no bad effects of what I'm doing. Mm. Like, for example, if I sell, tell you your bottom looks great when I feel that it doesn't, mm -hmm. where's the harm in that? Where's the harm in that? Yeah. 
I'm just making you feel good about yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Right? yeah. If I tell you you're beautiful, but I don't think you are, yeah. where's the harm in that? Right? If I flirt with you and make you feel good about yourself, and I think, oh, there's a few things that are not that good about yourself, where's the harm in that? Yeah. Right? If I present a facade of myself to you, and you seem to like and it. And you like it, so you yeah. jump in the bed with me, where's the harm in that? Yeah. Right? Where's the harm in any of these things? Yeah. I haven't harmed you. You've wanted to get in bed with me. You wanted to, you know, you, know, you wanted to hear the lie. You wanted, to, you know, so it's all okay, isn't it? What's the problem? There's no problem with that, is there? Yeah. You know, and so we start telling ourselves that there's no harm yeah. in any of these things. Yeah. And once we tell ourselves there's no harm, it's the same effect of saying there's no sin. Yeah. Because there's no results of sin, we're basically saying now. Yeah. So, so while I might admit that lying's not necessarily good, I'm really saying there's no harm from lying. So now I'm really saying, well, there's, and, and I'm also saying that there's sometimes benefits from lying. Mm -hmm. So now I'm really saying that, no, lying's not a sin anymore. Mm -hmm. Lying's okay. Mm -hmm. it's not, there's no harm in it. Mm. It's a good thing. Uh, you know, we should be able to do it because it's a good thing. <laughs> So we do, we basically the truth is, isn't it, that specific sins, all sin, always causes problems in our life. Of course, it always causes unhappiness, pain, and suffering. But there's certain specific sins, as you some of the examples you just gave, that the majority of the world just wants to deny has any bad effects. Well, no, so, these specific sins feed addiction. Yes. So I'll, I'll give some examples and then let you so talk they, they more about addiction. it. Yes. So it's very important that we understand that to feed an addiction is feeding a lie and therefore has to be a sin. Yep. So we can look at the examples, but at the end of the day, we need to see that we often are in this state because we believe we're feeding an addiction and that's a good thing. Mm -hmm. And that's what's causing us to believe that the sin has, doesn't have any detrimental effect. Mm -hmm. But addictions have terribly detrimental effects actually on every person involved in the addiction. Mm. And once we come to see that, we see how immense the sin is. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Would you like the examples? Or yeah, you, let's you, go for them. Yeah. Yeah. So let's lying. Yeah. Damaging the environment, eating meat, attacking someone who's first harmed us. These are very common things that vast majority of the world engage in yeah. most of the time, yeah. pretty much every day, yeah. Um, yeah. and refuse to see as harmful or detrimental. That's right. Yeah. That's right. And particularly when it comes to the last one, like attacking someone who has harmed us, mm. most people think that's just justified. Mm. Um, that's not detrimental. That's how you pay them back. For That's how you show them that they did the wrong thing. You yeah, know? yeah. Not seeing the problems we're associated yeah. with it. So, but you're saying the reason that we don't see that as, as a problem or the see that it actually has an ongoing negative effect for us is because it's actually feeding an addiction within us. Yes. Yeah. Now, all of these things are feeding addictions within us. Mm -hmm. And so therefore we think they're good yeah. when they're not. Yeah. And, and, they, and if, we like, if we look at lying, we can see that most people who have been at the end of the lie mm -hmm. and have been severely affected in their life by the lie know that lying feels really bad yeah. when you lie too. Yeah. And yet most people lie yes. because they, they're not feeling the full effects of that, de de that detrimental effect. Yes. Right? Let's look at when it comes to damaging the environment. Most of us know that, you know, obviously if we keep feeding plastics into the environment over and over again without doing anything about it, we're going to cause problems to the environment, right? Mm. Most of us know that. But if we believe that it's not a sin and it's just a decision, mm -hmm. now we're attempted to get away with it more. Mm. Right? So you're saying that we're more likely to want to tell ourselves that there's nothing detrimental about what's going on if it, le if if it benefits, le some benefits way, us in the short term. In the short term. It leads it's always short -term. to the avoidance of some kind of discomfort in the short term. Yep. Then I'm now already invested in avoiding seeing yep. that sin is detrimental. That's right. I've, yep. I'm not seeing what, I'm, what I've called an investment yeah, uh, it's like uh, you know, in business, you, you would call that having an uh, ulterior motive, wouldn't you? Yes. And and many times our so-called logic has ulterior motives. Yes, uh, and, <laughs> and, so true. and we're not yeah. exa examining them. Yeah. Another ulterior motive is obviously eating meat. Mm. Um, 
we can see, if we look at it logically, yeah. we can see the huge environmental destruction that occurs from eating meat. Yeah. You know, football fields, even here in Queensland, which is a which is meant to be a progressive Western society, of of clearing is being done every day in order to feed the meat desire of meat in the world. I saw one study recently which actually cited that the land, the level of land clearing, the rate of land clearing in Queensland, which is a state of Australia that which we live in, which is our home state here, home state is actually on a par with Brazil now. Yes. Which is... Which is the equivalent of one soccer field, football field a minute. Yeah, I, I don't know how mm. quick... Yes, but but it's Brazil is known to be the la one of the largest land clearers in the world. Yes, and the, and when you fly over parts of Brazil, yeah. and very look obvious. at parts of Brazil, yeah. it's very, very obvious when you go to Brazil, you can see the terrible detrimental effects but you see them here living in our home state, yes. exactly the same detrimental yeah. effects every yeah. single day we see them. Yeah. And, and it all comes from the world's desire for meat, mm. not from an individual person's, mm. one person saying, I want to eat meat because that hardly has any effect. It's billions of people wanting to eat meat. Yes. That yeah. has a huge detrimental effect on the planet. And yet we all go, it's not a sin. It's just normal. Well, God even <laughs> commanded us to in the Bible, you know, and all yeah. this kind of stuff. And if you talk to a, a local farmer about the the rate of land clearing and burning, because that's a huge thing they do here, yeah. they will argue that it's not only not detrimental, that it's beneficial. Beneficial to the environment. Yes. When all these species are being destroyed mm -hmm. and, and never being, being recovered or anything, but they will argue that it's beneficial. Yes. Yes. Yeah. 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 So there's an example of not seeing something as detrimental. Yeah. And then, of course, the one we mentioned, which is the, you know, harming others because they harmed us yeah. type of thing. That's yeah. pretty obvious. We can see that that's obviously a sin, but but most people on the planet believe that's not a sin. That's just a normal consequence of bad behaviour of somebody else. And you got to let them know that they've done something bad. And, this is the and, way to do it. And I'm entitled to it. They're the ones who should who have a who should bear a detrimental consequence, not me who does the attack in return. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. very common, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So. There's many other examples we give that were just a few, but yeah. it shows you that we have some pretty strong desires to avoid the concept of sin being detrimental to, to us and the planet. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, absolutely. Okay, our next one is ignoring sin by believing that sin is normal. So this is where we see, okay, I don't do everything right all of the time and there might, it's maybe not the right thing to do, but everybody does it. It's a normal human condition. Yeah. So why do we want to believe that committing sin is a normal human condition? Well, if everybody's doing it, then I should be able to. That's the main reason why we want to. <laughs> <laughs> we, we want to sin, obviously, when we do this. Yeah. But we want to be able to say, we want to sort of let ourselves off the hook for doing it. Yeah. Right. And also absolve our conscience from doing. So it's just a way, basically, of minimising and justifying sin. Uh, that's why we want to believe that. It, yeah. We believe that so that we can just minimise and justify our yeah. sin. Yeah. Everybody does it, so... So why can't why I? Why can't I? Yeah. Or there's no problem with me doing it because everyone else is. Yeah. yeah. Or, you know, God created us sinful creatures. It's God's fault that we're doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Basically, that's what that says. It does. Or it? we have become sinful creatures because of Adam and Eve. So it's Adam and Eve's fault. <laughs> you know, yeah. that's the Christian religious viewpoint. Yeah. Um, you know, what's the Muslim religious viewpoint? Sorry, yeah. the Muslim. Yeah, the Islamic religious viewpoint and the, you know, I don't know the, the Judaic religious viewpoint yeah. and the you know, the Buddhist religious viewpoint and the yeah. Hindu religious viewpoint are all different, of course, yeah. but, but they all go, well, everybody does it. Yes. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And, and so why can't I? Yeah. You know, that, that is an underlying premise of most of these viewpoints, right? Yes. Yes. Now, some of them say in their idealistic form, the religions don't present that viewpoint, yeah. but that's not what you see in practice. Yes. In practice, most of them go, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, the Christians, Christians will go, oh, yeah, there's such a thing as sin, yeah, and it's real bad when we do it, but everybody does it, you know, yeah. like, that's why we need Christ to die for us and yes. the blood of Christ in yes. order to, all you got to do is believe in the blood of Christ and continue on your merry way sinning. That's the attitude that they have, even though that might not yeah. be the underlying belief. Yeah. Emotionally, the attitude is, 
we need ways to allow ourselves to continue sinning. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways to allow ourselves to continue sinning is to just sin as a normal human condition. Yeah, yeah. What about this one, which um, I think is kind of interesting? Um, so if I've been abused as a child mm -hmm. and I've been shut down from experiencing the pain of the abuse. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm now an adult with now, all that pain. Yes, I'm an adult with all that pain, but I'm still shut down to the experience of that pain. Mm -hmm. And the, the and I see or I see shutting down emotionally um, like as a normal thing to do. Mm -hmm. So. I'm going to see, I'm going to have some problems with perception here, aren't I? Mm -hmm. I'm going to see when other people are sinning, they might even be hurting me in the same way that I was hurt as a child, but because I'm shut down to it, mm -hmm. I just think it's normal. Yes. And then also I see so that... this is a more insidious view of normal, isn't it? It is. This is an insidious view of normal based upon prior harm that's been perpetrated against us. That I have been shut down from feeling. And that may cause us to have either inferiority complexes yes. or superiority complexes. Yes. That then cause us to believe that what we are actually doing is normal. Yes. yes. So in other words, a person who's been taught from childhood that they're better than anybody else does grow up believing they are better than everybody else and that's normal yes. for them. Yeah. Right. And a person who's taught from childhood that they're inferior, they've been attacked or harmed or hurt as a child, so they grow up believing they're inferior, now believe that they are inferior. And when other people treat them badly, that's because they are inferior. And it's normal. And, and it's, it's normal. no sin there. Yes. yes. And the trouble with normalising it in this way, which is a very insidious view of normal, yeah. is that, which is all based about, about what we haven't come to realise in our growth in terms mm -hmm. of what we haven't forgiven. Yes. Right. And we then perpetrate, as a result, mm -hmm. further sin yeah. in these belief systems. Yeah. Yeah. By, yeah. by engaging the belief systems in practice in our day-to-day -day life. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. But that is a more insidious view of normal. Here I was th thinking more about the view of normal that's purposeful, just as a... As a, as a justification. Justification. Yeah, got you. Whereas the viewpoint of normal you've raised yeah. is a viewpoint of normal based upon the insidiousness of being of growing up in an environment where abusive behavior is normal mm. or sinful behavior is normal and when you say normal you mean it's standard it happens every day yes. and therefore it starts to be seen as normal and it starts to be seen as though even though it's not right yeah it's normal yes yeah. and and that's another way of seeing normal isn't yeah, it? it yeah is. than it than actually believing it is normal Yes. And therefore right. Yes, yeah. I see. Yeah. There's two different things. There. One yeah. is saying it is right and normal, and yeah. the other is saying it's not right, but it is normal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and obviously God's laws are operating all the while. Of course. To yeah. expose all of these problems. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, so we're responsible for seeing these problems as problems. Yes. But yes. these are just common ways that society and individuals just overlook sin, yes. which then stymies our whole process of forgiveness and repentance, Correct. which is why we're raising it. Yes, yeah. that's right. Okay. So the fourth one is ignoring sin to support my false belief systems. Mm. So how does ignoring sin help me support my false belief systems? Um. If I believe, uh, uh, give some examples. Yeah. If I believe that um, that one race is superior to another, mm -hmm. and it happens to be my race mm -hmm. that's superior, mm -hmm. of course, uh, it's highly unlikely I'll believe the opposite. But yeah. if I believe that uh, my race is superior to others, you mm -hmm. know, then you can see that that is a false belief system. Yeah. Right. But then if I go and say and do this and I go and harm people of different races, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I can I then might say to myself, oh, that's not a sin because yeah. they are inferior to me. Yeah. I, I, they yeah. deserve harm. It's my right to harm them. Another example is a king who mm -hmm. has subjects. Mm -hmm. Often kings believe themselves to be God appointed yeah. historically yeah. and therefore having the right to have subjects. Mm -hmm. right? mm -hmm. So the king's not going to himself, I'm equal to everybody. Mm -hmm. He's going to himself, no, I'm superior to everybody. I'm better than everybody. I'm king. 
Yeah. And I have a God appointed or, or um, you know, a, a right, a legal right or whatever to treat people in the way that I do. Mm. So ignoring my treatment of other people yeah. helps me to support this belief that I'm God, that I have God given rights. Correct. And if I examine my treatment of other people, I go, am I being fair? Am I being ethical? Am I being moral with these people? No. Mm. Therefore, I must be wrong, even though my belief systems are telling me I'm right. Yes. Uh, that's what it would do. Yeah. But no, what we have a tendency to do is exactly the opposite to that. We yeah. go, I'm allowed to treat you badly because of my belief systems. Yes. Right? Yeah. Now, my belief yeah. systems now support my sin. Mm -hmm. Right, And I want them to support my sin and my sin now supports my false beliefs. Yeah. So I go treating you badly and that uh, that helps me believe that you deserve to be treated badly. Mm. So it's, this is it's not only ignoring sin, it's acting in sin to support my false beliefs. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, and in fact, using my false belief as a justification for sin or using my sin as a justification for my false, false belief. belief. So in yeah. other words, both things are just as bad as each other, obviously. Yes, yeah. but, but both things occur where I use my sin, my bad treatment of another person, as a, 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 to support my false belief, which is they deserve to be treated badly. Yeah. Right? Or I use my false belief that race deter, deserves to be treated badly because, you know, God in the Bible said, of course, you did this and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And I give myself all these explanations, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and then as a result of that, I go, I'm going to treat them badly. Yeah. Right. That's my justification. It's not a sin to treat them badly. My belief system supports my sin. Yeah. So either one is wrong, mm -hmm. obviously, and not ethical, but it's what we do to avoid the concept of sin. Yeah. And we avoid, you know, contemplating that we are actually sinning and therefore mm. becoming repentant. Or if somebody else does it to us, we, we may be avoiding forgiveness in it. Yeah, I had some other ideas about other mm. ones. You used the superiority kind of examples mm -hmm. there. Um, but these ones I see very commonly, so beliefs like, mm -hmm. if I don't take what I need by whatever means possible, mm -hmm. I'm going to go without. Exactly. So my Big problem, the, eh? huge issues with lack on the planet. Yes, yes. Um, and so which cause people to value their own resources above others or mm -hmm. to justify. Yeah, my property is um, worth more than yours. Yep. Yeah. My life's worth more than yours. Yes. My food's worth more than yours. Yes. I need to retain what I and get what I need. Yeah. And, and if, if it's I at don't, the cost of you, that's yeah. okay. If I don't scrimp and save or or cut a corner here, then we're going to have nothing. And so all of these kind of false beliefs support mm -hmm. my sinful behaviour. Yeah. And it also, I'm more prone to. Uh, ignore the sin and the consequences of my sin because my false belief is driving me towards that state. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So again, the sin supports the false belief and yeah. the false belief supports the sin. Yeah. And so now we can stay in this never ending cycle where our sin and our false beliefs are in harmony with each other. Yeah. And now we can believe that we're all fine. It's not really a sin. <laughs> yes. Or what about this one? It's loving to please others and never confront them. Yes, it's, common one. It's so common, yeah. and yet that's a total false belief. Yes. It causes us to justify our sin. It causes us to justify lies. Yeah. To, to also even justify bad treatment towards ourselves. Yes. Denial of our own desires. Yes. Um, to to uh, do whatever we can do, even to the ruination of ourselves or even to, our, to, uh, the, to, to the cause of our ill health. Yes. You know, it's the cause of our ill health. Um, a lot of people do that with their kids yeah. and then Run create... themselves ragged, taking yeah. the kids here, taking the kids there, taking the kids here, taking the kids there. Can't to... handle their kids saying, mummy, you're yeah. annoying me, or mummy, yeah. you're a bad mummy, or daddy, mm -hmm. you're hurting me. Yeah. When when there's a, just a simple consequence, they, <laughs> I see a lot of parents, yeah, modern no, parents like very that, common. who can't handle just even... Uh, uh, poor opinion of, it, of a momentary <laughs> a momentary poor opinion yeah. uh, so they become very easily manipulated yes um and yeah. they they feel like oh, i'm a bad parent unless i do these things and yeah. therefore so my sin so supports sin. my false belief and my false belief supports my sin yeah and mm. the child's sin is then supported by my false belief yeah that, and that's even terrible really because yes. then the child grows up enjoying their sin yeah mm. yeah 
Okay. So I, sp I suppose what that does is it raises the question, well, why do I want to support my own false belief systems? Mm -hmm. Well, of course, the main reason why is because I want to sin. <laughs> 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 I want to keep doing what I'm doing. Yeah. And so, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to know it's false. Yes. <laughs> don't tell me it's false. Yes. You, let, you know, you tell me it's false, I have to stop. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to stop. I'll attack you if you tell me it's false. Exactly. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Number five. Ignoring sin because I don't want to feel emotions. Yes, I feel I feel this is a big one for people. Um, it's a it's a big attitude people have, isn't it? Very much. Just just feeling like emotions must be prevented at all cost. Mm. So, how does ignoring sin actually help us avoid emotional experience? Well, obviously, every sin has an emotional reason for its occurrence, and so if I can ignore sin. I can sort of ignore the emotions associated with the sin. Mm. I could ignore that there's a cause that's emotionally driven. Mm -hmm. And that means that I don't have to feel the emotions associated with the sin. Yeah. Right? So by ignoring the sin I get, and ignoring the emotion, I can, they support each other now. Yeah. I can continue to sin mm -hmm. and ignore the emotional consequence. And this will allow my support of continual sin but it'll also allow me to prevent myself from feeling emotions mm -hmm. now. I, I get away with not having to feel emotions anymore. Mm. And most people are terrified of emotion, mm. absolutely terrified. Mm. You can see the terror in people by how much we uh, go or gravitate towards medical, medically induced and chemically induced and drug induced ways of dampening down and suppressing emotion. Yeah. You know, you look how much alcohol abuse there is, drug abuse there is, and and medicine there are, are that you yes. can buy off the shelf or by a prescription that are all there just to support the suppression of emotion. Yeah. You can see how dedicated we are as society, particularly Western society, mm -hmm. in not dealing with emotion. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And denial of sin is just another way. Of not yeah. having to deal with emotion. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. the same, another tool that we've got yeah. in our arsenal yeah. <laughs> of, uh, of preventing ourselves from having to address sin at all or address emotion at all. Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm. All right. Um, number six, sinning because I want the results of my sin. Mm. See, this is where I think a lot of people are not honest with themselves. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So we need to discuss some things yeah. about being honest with them, so ourselves about what we want. Yeah. Yeah. So why do I want sin? Well, I, I want sin because it feeds my addictions to selfish desires generally. So, so, so sin allows me to get away with my selfish desires. Mm. It allows me to continue to grow in my selfish desires. It allows me to not have to examine the consequences of my selfish desires. <laughs> and so, so what I finish up doing is I finish up really wanting it. And it's interesting, you know, even most people who are religious, particularly the re Christian religion has some quite strong definitions of sin. Mm. And yet, most people do not admit to themselves that they really want to sin. Mm. And, and there, is this, uh, there is this terrible thing in the Christian faith that goes along the lines of, uh, you know, because of the original sin, you know, Adam and Eve sin, I want to sin now, and it's in, built in me now, and can't I can't help really help it. Yeah. I've just got to be, you know, I've just got to engage, like I said before, you know, the, the concept of engage, you know, faith in Christ's sacrifice for me. Yeah. And, and God will forgive me for my sin. Yeah. Right. And... And that's not acknowledging how much we desperately want to sin. So we it, want to sin, not not because of <laughs> blaming someone else down like thousands or tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of years ago, <laughs> but we ourselves in this right moment now. right yeah. now do feel like screwing around with that other woman, <laughs> if that's what we want to call it, or or having sex with another woman other than my wife. That's yeah. what I feel like. She's attractive. She looks pretty hot to me. That's yeah. what I feel like doing. Yeah. But I just can't admit that that's what I want. <laughs> so I've got to blame it on someone else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, so is it fair to say then I want to sin 
in order to suppress, deny, get away from the the painful results of previous sin. Not it's not only that reason. No, we don't sin just because of previous sins, either perpetrated against us or that we've perpetrated. We sin because of desire. We have a direct desire to get something selfishly. So to get a, a short, it can only be a short term experience of power. We don't believe that though. No, but, but, um, but the truth is it the truth is, isn't is it? it's, it's not lasting. Term, but but, but so, we don't believe it in the moment. No, no, no. Um, we believe it's going to benefit us. And oftentimes we believe it's going to benefit us for the rest of our lives. Yeah. In terms uh, of giving us power, control, uh, pleasure. Pleasure. Uh, pleasure is a major motivation for sin. Yeah. What we believe is pleasure. Yes. I hate using the word pleasure because it's not actual pleasure, but it's, no, it is, it's um, more like lust. short term. It's more lust than pleasure. Ple yeah. True pleasure creates happiness for yeah. everyone involved. Yes. Lust only creates temporary happiness for the person engaging it. Yes, and you don't just mean sexual lust. No, there, I mean know? all forms yes. of lust. Yeah. Lust for food, for yes. clothes, for yeah. for power, for you yeah. know money, for sex, for yeah. whatever. Um, it's all it's all lust of a kind, and it's all selfishly driven. Oh. And we just don't want to see it as such, oftentimes. And so what we do is we say, we say to ourselves, "Oh, it's all part of the human experience, or whatever we come up with," you know, rather than just saying, "No, I damn it, I want, <laughs> I want the results, I want it," you know, yeah. like yeah. and honestly tell it, you know, honestly own up to the fact that we do want to do things that are destructive to ourselves and other people. Yeah. And, and honestly, we'd f be far better off if we, if we were honest about that. Yeah. We would, but we we frequently are not, unfortunately, honest that we actually do want to sin. Mm -hmm. Like, and, and you see this a lot, even with people who have been harmed in the past, that's true. So you do see it, like if you've if been being abused as a child, Frequently, you have strong desires to be angry with every man you see. Yeah. But being angry with every man you see is a sin. Yeah. Right? And you haven't forgiven. That's also a sin. Mm. So at the end of the day, you know, that there's a lot of sin you're committing there just because you, you want to be angry with every man. Mm. Right? And for men, you, you, you know, the, frequently there's lots of things going on for any gender and any culture and any society where they say, oh, you know, I, I feel that my actions should be justified given my past experience. But then there's also a lot of sin that we engage where we've had no past experience. Yeah. And we've had no damaging thing that's caused us to engage it. We just want it. Yeah. And we're not honest about it. Yeah. Right. So sure, there's times when we have what we would call justifications, but they're not real justifications. They're just lying to ourselves about what the real motivation is. And then we have times when there's no real justification, we just want to. Yeah. And the only justification we have is that's what I want. Yeah. Either way, we just need to own up to the fact that we want to sin. Yeah. We do. Yeah. And, and, and we want the results of it. And, and, and that I want what sin's going to give me. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. All right, let's move on slightly, still on this theme of wanting the results of sin. Sure. Um, emotional beliefs drive my desire to sin, don't they? Mm -hmm. So what, how, perhaps a better, how do beliefs drive our desire to sin? And uh, here's a, give a, an example from a male perspective. Um, here, most men believe that they've been created with a strong sexual urge that's much stronger than women. Yes, huh? I see. And, and this sexual urge means that they've got to satisfy the sexual urge, and that means having sex with as many different women as they possibly can. Mm. Right? There's an example of a emotional belief driving a desire. Driving a desire right? the, the, the belief supports the desire. Mm. The belief being men have an inbuilt need for sex. Yes, the belief that they can't that they can't control overcome or overcome. It's it's a natural that has part to be satisfying. Man. That's yeah. the emotional belief. Yeah, the desire then is got to have sex with you. Got to have yeah. sex with you. Yeah. If you don't give me sex, you don't care about me. You don't love me. Whatever it is that you want to believe, you know, yeah. that you want the desire to fulfill, mm -hmm. you you will just continue in that particular vein. Yes. So this is an example where emotional belief is driving the desire to sin. It's basically saying, my emotional belief is true. 
men were made that way. Yeah. We are, it's a natural part. We call it evolution. It's a natural mm -hmm. part of evolution. Eating meat, natural part of evolution. Mm. That's what we tell ourselves. So what do we do? We go and rate the planet of all its resources just to produce meat. Yeah. Right? We commit huge sin yes. environmentally because of the emotional, emotional beliefs that we were made to eat meat. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Right. I was just remembering, like, because um, I used to live in a refugee camp with um, a bunch of Palestinians, and it's and not just Palestinians in that part of the world. It's very prevalent to eat meat. Of course. And I didn't eat meat, and they used to. Th their emotional belief was so strong that you need meat to survive, and survival is a big issue for a refugee. Yeah. So they would look at me and literally say to me, "How do you live?" How, like, how, how, how are you, are you still breathing? Yes. yes. <laughs> like, what? How is it happening? You know, yeah. you're not eating meat, yeah. and so I guess that's a very strong emotional belief. Driving like, the desire. Driving to sin. the desire to sin. Mm. That's um, an example. Yeah. 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 And it's so prevalent, hey, with all yeah. sorts of areas. You look at any area: sexual, medical, moral, ethical, business economic, religious, mm. and you add up all these different areas, how many of it, it drives desire to sin? Mm. Like the belief that my religion is better than your religion mm. drives a desire to sin. Yeah. The belief that my religion is the only religion that's going to be saved. Yeah. Drives my belief, my, my, my desire yeah. for sin. Yeah. My belief that you're committing a sin when you're not. Yeah. Drives my desire to harm you mm. or punish you. So these emotional beliefs, I mean, everything we've talked about today is, is surrounds emotions, doesn't it? Of course. Um, but these emotional beliefs are sometimes um, so strongly held in a way that we don't even see that they're driving sin, do we? We, we see that to we not have them, them is too, too sin. Well, basically. we believe they're right. Yeah. And this gets back to a previous thing, a discussion that we talked about, the problem with feeling we're right. Yes, it's impossible it's to impossible repent. It's impossible to repent for things that we believe are right. Mm. So if you believe eating meat is right, mm -hmm. you will not repent for it. No. You will not. No. Right? You have to first work through whether it is right or wrong from God's perspective yeah. before you're ever going to repent for it. Yeah. Right. The same applies to more severe things, you know, where you've harmed humans as a result of your beliefs. Mm. So if you believe your religion is right yeah. and therefore gives you the justification to go and attack another religion, yeah. you've got a problem with your beliefs. Yes. And, and yet, because you think that a holy book has established it, such as the Bible or the Koran or some other holy book has established this belief, mm -hmm. And you believe that particular book is God's word, and that's the reason why you have this belief. It makes no difference to God. No. Right? The fact is, you're using a false belief, emotion, you're, you're using emotional belief to perpetrate sin. Yeah. Sin is harming other people. Yeah. And, and you're perpetrating it. It doesn't matter what you're saying is the basis for it, whether it's a book that you believe is holy or not. Yeah. It's still a sin. Yeah. And God's going to penalize you for it. The law will penalize you for it. Yes. In the long run. Yeah. And so in this section, I mean, we're talking about sinning because I want the results of sin. Mm -hmm. Are you then saying that I'm holding on to these emotional beliefs because I want the results of the sin? Frequently, yes. So I, it's a conscious decision to hold on to the beliefs? Yes, I want yeah. to, uh, you know, many religious faiths in the past have warred with each other for centuries and they want to continue doing so. Yeah. And um, they want to gain ascendancy over each other. They want power over each other. They don't want to feel other. the pain of previous, um, of previous uh, hurt, hurt or any of these things. And conflict, yeah. No, they don't want to forgive. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, they use their belief systems as a justification to not forgive. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and this is an example, emotional belief system using justification to sin. Mm. I don't, I'm not going to forgive because my my belief system religious now but emotional is my religion's right yours mm. wrong mm. you know and and you've attacked us in the past bearing in mind of course most religions have attacked most religions in the past there's mm. only a few religions on the planet who have never been involved in war yeah <laughs> you know yeah i think there's only a couple actually out of all the many th tens of thousands of them there's only a couple that have never been involved in war historically yeah, yeah. so 
basically most of the religions that are involved in this process have all committed sin with each other at some point. Yeah. And yet none of them will admit so because their belief, their emotional belief based mm -hmm. on the Bible or Koran or some other book, their emotional belief is that they're right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Very damaging. Lots to say about that. Yeah. yeah. Very damaging. <laughs> Okay, the seventh and final way we've listed, it's not an exhaustive list, yes. but <laughs> the seventh way we've come up with that's yes. very prevalent of ignoring sin on the planet yep. is refusing to see pain and suffering is the result of sin. So yes. not seeing cause and effect, sin creating pain. Yes. In yep. other words, we sort of believe pain and suffering comes from something else. Yeah. And, and most people now have the philosophy that pain and suffering comes from evolution or it comes from, you know, the fact that we've got, you know, it, it, all sorts of things wrong with us in terms of our body or our intellect or whatever, or it comes from accident, limited accidents or limited planet. resources yep. or yep. anything other than human choice mm. <laughs> <Basically>. yeah. <laughs> is what we want to believe. Yep. Right? And so that's part of the problem. But, but yes, refusing to see our pain and suffering as a result of sin is obviously going to cause us to believe that that sin is okay because there's no pain and suffering that results from it. Yes. Mm. So why can't I see how sin causes pain and suffering? So if I put that in a longer way, sure. why can't we see that our own sin contributes to the pain and suffering in our life? and in the lives of others and the pain and suffering that society generally feels. Is it true to say we can't see that or is it a willful thing again? Oh, what, it's, what's a, it's a willful on? thing, obviously, right. yes. When you say, why can't we? Well, we've listed already in this discussion yep. many reasons why we can't. Yeah. But, but if we summarize, uh, summarize it, basically we believe uh, or we want to continue sinning mm. and, and we feel that that if we could if we could trace pain and suffering back to sin, yes. then we'd probably have to stop sinning, right? Yeah. And we don't want to. No, because we want the results. Because <laughs> we it. want the results. Or of sin. we don't want to feel pain. Or we don't. Well, want it's it. interesting. We don't want all the results of sin. Yeah. Because the pain and suffering is a primary result of sin, it but is. we don't want to acknowledge that it is the primary result of sin yes. because if we did so we'd have to go back to the sin yes. and go should we be doing this sin yes so so for example when we when we act in addiction with each other mm -hmm. we don't want to see that that's a sin yeah we don't want to see the pain and suffering that causes yeah and in not seeing the pain and suffering it causes i can then continue the addiction yeah of feeding codependent addictions i can continue in that and not, i don't have to face that it's the it, it, the pain and suffering that I'm in is caused by that. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. and, and this is the problem that we have, is that, is that we're to constantly trying to deny the effect because that helps us deny the cause. Yes. The effect being pain and suffering, the cause being sin. Mm. So if I can deny pain and suffering is caused by sin, Yes then I can basically say, no, pain and suffering is caused by something else. Yes. It's impurities, it's diseases, it's, uh, it's you, know, you know, other problems that we can't really control. It's the way God created us. It's, and we come up with thousands, mm. literally thousands mm. of excuses. The world's littered with them. The world's yeah. littered with them. And, and it's, uh, you know, we'd be going on for months if we had <laughs> yeah. to mention every one of them. Thousands of excuses that we come up with that basically say, the bottom line is they basically say, pain and suffering is not caused by sin. Yeah. It's caused by something else. <laughs> yes. Yes. And that's so, why we don't want to recognize the link between the two. <laughs> yes. Mm -hmm. So just to summarize then, why I don't trace the effects of sin back to each cause, that's because I don't want to acknowledge that the pain and suffering in my life right now is basically the result of sins I've engaged in or not forgiven in the past. Well, it's not only that. If we look at this question of why I don't want to trace the effects of sin back to each cause, if I could see correlations between the actual sin mm -hmm. 
right? The sorry, the the actual pain and suffering that's resulted from the sin. Yep. The flavour of it, the type of pain and suffering. For example, cancer in my bowel. Mm -hmm. That's traceable back to this particular cause. Yeah. If I but if I want to keep doing that particular thing, then I don't really want to do this tracing. Yes. I, I really I really want to say no 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 to myself. Yep. No. It's because of the genetic structure of the body and God yep. must have made a mistake, right? So um, if we take cancer of the bowel and we say, I don't know definitively, but we say that's um, produced by a very strong projection towards others that they demand. Demand, demand that they give me a sense of worth. Yes, which is, which is its primary cause. Okay. So. <laughs> Good shot in the dark. Yeah. Um, so if I want to, you're saying if I want to continue to, to have that demand met by others. Yes, given the fact that I don't want to feel the pain of having no worth. Having no, well, that's why I want the that's demand. That's why I want the demand met. So I've got this, so I, then I develop bowel cancer and instead of wanting to see if there's a correlation between this effect, yes. cancer, and some kind of sin within me. Yes, my demand of others that they my meet my addiction to, to have, have worth, a sense of worth. Because I don't want to cry about having none. Yep. yep. So I don't, so I'm not going to make that trace. I'm not going to link that. I'm going to say it's genetics and it's in my family and it's my diet and I, all these other things. Yep. yep. And anything possible other than the actual thing that it is. It is. Yeah. Now let's look at something like lung cancer, another mm -hmm. example. Lung cancer is caused by the addiction to suppress emotion mm -hmm. of grief mm -hmm. by getting other people to constantly believe that you're a good person and you don't need to feel grief. Yep. Right? Yep. So there's my addiction. It's a yep. demand that I'm placing on other people. I'm keep, I keep on feed, you know, feeding my addiction through this demand. It causes me to have lung cancer. Yep. What do I do with it? I go, no, it's not, lung, it's not that. No. No, it's my it's smoking or it's yeah well no i haven't smoked actually so it's not smoking what second is it second hand smoke second hand smoke so or, i can blame or, others or it's yeah. like oh because they burn off a lot around us or yeah. or or oh well there's no real reason you know it just happens and who yeah. knows why it happens and yeah. you know we'd rather believe anything other than that everything has a cause yes and yet scientifically science says everything has a cause every effect has a cause yeah Interesting. <laughs> so scientifically, I believe everything has a cause. Yeah. Every effect has a cause, but emotionally, I don't. Yeah. So how 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 ethical am I being now? Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm allowed to trace the physical effect back to a physical cause. Yeah. But I ignore all of the other potential causes, emotional, spiritual, of that physical thing. Yeah. Because it helps me get away with a lot of other feelings and emotions that I can then suppress yeah. as a result of it. Yeah. Yeah. So we are very insidious with this. We, we are. We are, we are not tracing f effects back to their actual causes. Mm -hmm. and, and science is getting really bad with this in regard to emotion, mm -hmm. right? and spirituality mm -hmm. they're basically saying everything is physical mm -hmm. right not that you see you see this is the trouble is when you're focused on everything just being physical you're not willing to consider mm -hmm. that there's a spiritual part of you and a soul-based part of you and the love-based part of you an emotional part of you that all have effects and yet logically they are energies in motion just like light or sound or any other energy in motion, and therefore they must have effects, mm -hmm. right? But no, we want to deny that all that is possible. Mm -hmm. Why? Because really, we'd like to refuse to see that all that pain and suffering is a result of a sin we're committing. Mm. Or have committed. Or, or have committed. Or that others have committed. That we have to emotionally feel yeah. in order to release, and that we have to either forgive or repent for. Yeah. We want to deny all that so that we can sort of get away with continuing the sin and and the and and of course it just ignores all the pain and suffering and makes all the pain and suffering seem ethereal and imaginary almost like. Yeah, or it's like it's like oh nobody's got any idea why it happens. 
is it better to believe that mm. or is it better to believe no everything happens for a reason let's go and find the reason mm. uh, this is where we're not being very logical mm. humanity is not being logical they think that every physical thing that happens has a reason now they're always looking for the reasons then so why isn't every physical thing that's happening to my body have a reason aside from just being physical my, why might there not be other reasons that i cannot see like the wind blowing the trees something i can't see but can feel why can't it be the same with this yeah you see it makes no sense but we love it making no sense <laughs> because we can continue the sin and ignore the effect yeah. to a degree but the sad effect of that is that we never cure pain and suffering mm. that's mm. the sad effect mm. yeah yeah so just finally here the one more thing from our notes mm -hmm. so you've you've said a lot about why we don't want to trace the effects of sin back to its cause mm. and that helps us avoid really this cause and effect relationship that's always occurring yes but it also means that we can blame either other people or other things like for example you said the physical aspects we can blame genetics we or can blame whatever. things we have no control over yes in, in preference to instead of taking personal responsibility for the things that we have control over which is removing the emotional cause from within us correct yeah yeah so we prefer to blame things we have no control over mm -hmm. and then use techniques to try to cure them yeah rather than actually take responsibility for the fact is if it's happening to our body mm -hmm. we do have control over it yeah 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 so something's going on that we do have control over mm. Mm -hmm. and okay. that particularly applies to pain suffering disease and accidents and all those so-called accidents and all those things they are all perpetrated by the condition of the soul <laughs> mm. interacting with the law as we've so stated yes so in the end of the day we need to start seeing the relationship between cause and effect and it's logical to do so mm. that's uh, that's what i what i amazes me engineers and scientists and doctors are very logical when it comes to the physical and totally illogical when it comes to the emotional yeah it makes no sense to me <laughs> if you were going to be purely logical, you'd think you'd, you'd apply the logic in all aspects of life, which include the emotional and the spiritual, mm. the love-based issues. Do you, do you think it's because, I think it's because people, there's so much resistance to emotion to th that people aren't feeling very much emotion. And so emotion seems illogical to them because they're so disconnected from it. No, I don't and think it's just that. Right. I don't think it's just that. It primarily comes from the desire to sin. Yeah. The desire to do what we suspect is wrong. Mm. Thinking and wanting there to be no consequence. Mm. That, that's where it really comes from. Yeah. And it also comes from, uh, you know, like we've mentioned, supporting of false belief systems and all these other things that we've mentioned as well. But... Mm. But honestly, it's a, it, is a, it is a very silly condition of humanity mm -hmm. to apply cause and effect to the physical and yet not apply it to things we can't see. Yeah, yeah. Bearing in mind that emotion must be energy in motion for us to be able to feel it. And bearing in, in mind that we know that there are energies in motion through measurements. We know that there are energies in motion such as light and sound and other energies of motion that we can't see, but we hear or feel the effect of. Mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. So if bearing that in mind, it makes no logical sense to assume that pain and suffering doesn't have a constant measurable cause. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Excellent. Mm. All right. Just to recap this section then, which mm -hmm. was all about um, why individuals and society overlook or ignore sin. Yep. So I'll just go through our points finally. Yep. We ignore sin by refusing to believe sin is real. Yep. We ignore sin by refusing to believe that sin is detrimental or harmful. Yep. Uh, we ignore sin by believing that it's normal. So we talked about a couple of different ways that can happen. Mm -hmm. um, we ignore sin 
um, because it supports my false belief systems mm -hmm. and my false belief system support sin. Mm -hmm. uh, we ignore sin because we just don't want to feel emotion. Mm -hmm. We sin because we want the results of sin. And finally, we refuse to see that pain and suffering is the result of sin. So we refuse and deny this very relationship you're just speaking about, which Between is cause, cause and effect. effect. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, are the, they are some of the reasons. Obviously, they're not all of them. No. So we need to understand that this is not an exhaustive discussion about the subject. Yeah. But it will hopefully, what, what, what our goal here is to hopefully help people come to terms with the fact that pain and suffering and sin are all related and that there are many, many reasons why we wish to deny sin. And if we continue to deny sin, we will never repent or forgive. Yeah. And if that continues, then we are consigning not only our own lives, mm -hmm. but the entire of humanity to the same kind of existence we've always had. Yeah. Right. And so no change is possible. Yeah. So it's very important people see that relationship. And maybe after this discussion, people will start saying, well, I need to have a good look at myself as to my reasons yeah. about why I don't want to believe in sin and why I want to think, you know, why I want to keep sinning and why, why I want to minimise sin, how I want to minimise sin, what emotions yeah. I'm trying to avoid. Yeah. And, you know, hopefully the discussion will help people open their mind a bit to that concept of examination. Yes of the truth of the situation yeah. rather than just putting up with pain and suffering for the rest of their life and, and then having to deal with the reason for it after they pass. Yeah, yeah, mm. yeah. Very good. Mm. All right.